months ago, I was standing in a courtroom feeling anxious and alone. I was there to fight back against discrimination and unfair treatment by my former employer, one of the largest supermarkets in the UK, who employ over 100,000 people and turn over in excess of £17 billion a year. Unsurprisingly, they had an army of legal representation at their disposal, whereas I had none. I had no legal training and no experience of an employment tribunal, but I knew what was right and fair. It's funny how life turns out. I had no desire to legally represent myself against my employer. It certainly wasn't on my career plan as a supermarket buyer, but I felt the need to stand up and fight back. How did I get there? Let me tell you my story. After the birth of my first child, I began to realize that the work environment that I found myself in was unfair. It seemed that since becoming a mother, the rules had changed, or at least for me they had. One of the many challenges I faced was that there was little to no tolerance for my caring responsibilities at home. I would often notice colleagues rolling their eyes as I rushed out of the office at 4.30 to get to nursery before they shut, hoping that my child wasn't the last one waiting to be collected. I would regularly have to remind my manager that last-minute pieces of work were really difficult for me to complete because I had a part-time contract. To begin with, I thought that the issue was with me. Nobody else appeared to be complaining. They were getting on with their jobs and keeping their heads down. They were clearly stretched and overworked, but somehow they were getting the job done. And this caused me to question myself. Had I become less competent since becoming a mother? After I had my second child in the middle of a global pandemic, the discriminatory and unfair treatment reached its peak. I was lucky. I discovered the charity Pregnant Then Screwed, and they helped me to see <laughs> that the issue wasn't with me. I also began to understand what a lot of research shows, that the work environments that you and I find ourselves in have been designed and created to benefit only a small section of society. Essentially, white, middle-class, able-bodied, heterosexual, cisgendered men. 77%, that's three in four women, experience discrimination in the workplace. But only 1% raise a tribunal claim. Women regularly blame themselves. We're not good enough. We're not capable of having it all, whatever that means. Or we've lost competency. But none of that is true. The real issue is outdated practices and behaviours in many organisations. When I returned to work following my second maternity leave, it was clear to me I had a choice to make. I could either accept what my employer was trying to do to me by forcing me to complete a demanding full-time role whilst being paid a part-time salary and having to be available to the business as and when they needed me, or I could fight back and refuse to be taken advantage of. I chose to fight back. There are a number of things that helped me make that decision. My age, my experience, the privilege that I benefit from. But most importantly, I fundamentally believed the way that I was being treated was unfair. Up to that point in my career, I guess you could say I was the ideal employee. I'm a rule follower. I thrive on doing a good job and delivering results. Unlike my grandmothers, mum and aunties, I went to university. I then went on to work hard and carve out a career with no industry connections. 
I bought my own house, and I was financially independent, a first for many of the women that I grew up around. Whilst I was busy forging my career, I didn't realize that I was complying with a system that had been designed to serve only a small section of society, where men and women are both financially and socially unequal. I had an awareness of discrimination and gender inequality, but I naively thought I had navigated my way through that by achieving financial independence and having a job in what was at the time a male-dominated environment. I was wrong. Towards the end of 2021, when I finally decided to speak up about the unfair treatment that I had been subjected to, I started by following all the internal processes that my employer had in place. I really believed that by telling the truth and raising awareness of the unfair treatment that I was being subjected to, a solution would be found. But the people and the processes in place completely failed me. I couldn't understand why the issues weren't being looked into properly. The solution seemed so straightforward and obvious to me. I was being gaslighted. There was a complete denial by the business that I had been treated unfairly. The policies in place to protect employees did not work. The lack of apology and resolution made me determined to seek out justice. I was infuriated that I wasn't being listened to. I had worked extremely hard for 15 years, and I wasn't prepared to have my career and financial independence taken away from me. You may not know this, but working as a supermarket buyer, you find yourself in a fast-paced, ever-changing environment, which is cutthroat and brutal. This gave me a lot of experience and resilience, which stood me in good stead for the journey that lay ahead of me. Of course, there were times where I didn't think I could continue with the battle. It felt too hard. And I completely understand why so many feel unable to fight back when the odds are stacked against you. But I knew how I would feel in the future if I didn't make a stand. So I did what I've always done. I worked hard and I prepared like never before. So that I knew when I was in that courtroom, facing a judge, I had done everything I possibly could to present my case of discrimination to the best of my ability. I familiarized myself with the Equality Act. I observed other people's tribunals and I knew my case inside out. I also had to battle with the shame that I thought would follow if I didn't win my case. But the responsibility for fighting back for others, as much as for myself, kept me going. I recognized my privilege and I wanted to use it, even though it pushed me far out of my comfort zone. I needed to know I had tried. I had tried to make a difference. Fortunately, my hard work paid off. After a five-day hearing in October last year, where I personally cross-examined eight witnesses. These were people I had worked with during my career. A judge and panel unanimously found that I had been subjected to discrimination. The feeling of relief was huge. I will never forget the tears that streamed down my face as the judge read out that decision. After I won my case, my story was shared with the world. The charity who had supported me throughout the horrendous ordeal shared my story on social media, and it went viral. This made me realize how much my story resonated with and impacted so many people. What happened to me happens all the time. I have heard stories from so many who have experienced similar to me and from others who have seen it happen to others that they know and care about. The well-established and outdated practices in so many organizations which breed toxic 
and discriminatory behaviors, not just in men, have led women and so many marginalized groups to feel isolated and incompetent for years. Women have been led to believe that they are the problem, and this has got to stop. Winning my case on the grounds of sex discrimination has made me clearer than ever that the only way to change these antiquated systems is by speaking up for yourself and for others. Everyone is able to make a difference. It doesn't matter what your job title is, how junior or senior you are. We have got to get curious and ask questions. We can't continue to accept that this is how it has always been. How will anything improve or change if we continue to just accept the status quo? There aren't many examples of my former industry embracing change, but one that springs to mind is from 2015. Retailers were forced to start charging shoppers for plastic carrier bags. We had no idea how this was going to pan out. We weren't sure that customers would adjust. But seven years down the line, and single-use plastic carrier bags are down 97% in supermarkets. That's a huge change. And had retailers not been forced to take action, that might never have happened. If sharing my story means that others feel less isolated and more able to take action, that can only be a good thing. Each time somebody contacts me to say that they have benefited from learning about my experience, I feel motivated to help more people. And that's why I have set up Let's Talk Work, to help others fight for their rights in the workplace, no matter what the issue is. We can't wait for change to happen on its own. History shows that change only happens when action is taken. We have to be brave and speak up for what is right and fair. We have to demand better for ourselves and for future generations. We have to lift each other up and support one another. It won't be easy, but it will be worth it. Together, we can create a world that is more fair and just for everyone. Thank you.